Hello, today this is Barbara Ann Rosenberg, your roving reporter. And today we're on our way to one of my favorite cities in my fav one of my favorite countries. We're going to Oaxaca in Mexico. And we're going to stop along the way and go to Mexico City. So you're going to see some of the excitement there and then be enchanted as I am by all the wonders of Oaxaca. The focus of this segment is going to be Oaxaca, a very native Indian city in Mexico. But we're now in Mexico City, since you have to come through Mexico City to go to Oaxaca, and thought it was a good idea to stop and give you a little of the flavor of this grand city, probably one of the largest, if not the largest city in the world at this point. In the background is the magnificent cathedral built by the Spanish when they first came here in the early 16th century. It's been added to, as you can plainly see, it's a superb structure still in use today and it's on the edge of this wonderful big square where the Aztecs actually conducted sacrifices and did other and conducted other rituals during their thousands of years before the Spanish arrived. And if you were wondering what those Aztecs looked like back in those olden days, here are some guys dressed in Aztec costume here right at the Plaza Templo Mayor where the old original temple of the Aztecs was constructed. It was just found uh, about 10 years ago and excavated and it's really a magnificent, magnificent site. We're not going to go inside, but we thought you'd like to see these guys perform in their native costumes and music. Here is the Templo Mayor, or what is left of it, that was excavated. It was much higher and more grand, but a lot of the stones were taken to construct the cathedral when the Spanish came, and if this was lost for centuries, just recently excavated. Isn't it a gorgeous sight? are standing in the Zocalo, in the main square of our favorite city in all of Mexico. This is Oaxaca. It's high, about a mile high, dry, surrounded by mountains, and a high valley, actually, that runs for quite a way, and the weather is perfect. It's neither too hot nor too cold. It's dry. It's very, very Indian and we're standing in the main square and looking at the government house, at the governor's palace, and the whole square is surrounded by portals, portales, they call them, and restaurants and places where people stop to have a coffee or a meal, or they just sit here and enjoy the sun in this lovely, lovely town. Behind me is the Cathedral of Oaxaca, one of the landmark buildings, very old, one of the earliest in the entire area, and just known simply as the Cathedral. Incidentally, Oaxaca is spelled O-A-X-A-C-A. -A -A. I can remember coming here many years ago when people were <laughs> in the States were still calling it Oaxaca, but now I think people are sophisticated enough to know that it is Oaxaca very Indian, very Zapotec and mystic background, and still very traditional today. Here are the portals I was talking about where you can walk to get out of the sun if it does get too warm. And you see the very colonial construction of these buildings. The bright red one is called La Casa de la Abuela, or Grandmother's House, 
and it's a place where you go for traditional Oaxaca food. They're very well known for their moles, mixtures of uh, seeds and nuts and chocolate, yes, chocolate, not sweet chocolate, bitter chocolate, and a lot of spicy peppers. It may sound weird, but it's delicious. Also, Oaxaca is a state well known for its mass carvers. And here you see several that are jaguars. And jaguars are the mountain lions and also a representation of one of the deities of the uh, ancient peoples here. Here's another view of the cathedral, the very elaborately carved facade and other government buildings off in the background. The whole area is a, if someone had once said, put a roof over all of Oaxaca and declare the whole thing a museum. We'll walk along eventually and see some of the colonial buildings. It's just preserved magnificently. And here are some of the traditional vendors with their own wares, hammocks, I guess hammocks of all kinds and colors, the natural colors or the very brilliantly dyed ones. And the young woman and a child over next to them, and they're asking for money but playing a, an accordion so that they're just not sitting and begging. It's a, it's a very colorful city. I gave it to her. Mike! Hello. This is the Alcala, sort of a pedestrian walkway in the middle of town, surrounded by all the colonial buildings in various colors and designs. And with the mountains in the background, those puffy white clouds that hang over them, the whole thing is like a painted picture not actually like a real place, but it is definitely real. We're now in Lomano Magica, which means magic hand. And the person who is in residence here is one of the most famous weavers in the country. Uh, the, also, the crafts in this shop are among the best that you'll ever, ever see. These are all done with natural dyes, the rugs, and you can see the, the um, yarn laid out here in the colors that they've, they've already been dyed, and all wonderful things around on the walls and up on the balconies. What you're seeing here is the Santo Domingo Church, later in time than the cathedral. But look at those two turrets, the tile turrets. Aren't they gorgeous? Uh, and you again get the background of the mountains and the colonial architecture in the foreground. And here is a woman working on the traditional lap loom, uh, weaving at, in Oaxaca, which is very well known for its weaving. And here are some of the finished products of the uh, kinds of patterns of the rugs that are typical to the Oaxaca area. The, some of the rugs have designs that are, you c will see in uh, the ruins and they're taken directly from that. And that's the water man, delivering water, purified water, by the gallon, five gallon, 10 gallon, whatever it is. Anybody who has a house here or an apartment has that kind of delivery service. The golden interior of this church is really quite remarkable. The, uh, the gold altar is simply stunning, and there are regular services held here. It's not a museum. And they advise you, there is a sign that advises you that although it's beautiful, it is not a museum, it is a church. This is the ex convento de uh, Santo Domingo that was also built in the 17th century. And many, many convents 
have been turned into different things. We'll see one later, I guess, that's a hotel. And this gorgeous place is the State Museum of Oaxaca with wonderful things from the tomb of uh, where they found the gold in about 1933. These are about, these figurines are about 3,500 years old. And as you can see, you see, things haven't changed all that much. Uh, the women are a little thinner, hard bodies from workout. These people just worked. And these artifacts are from Monte Alban, about 2,000 years ago, more or less. It was probably the first big city in the New World with about 15,000 inhabitants and a very sophisticated lifestyle with temples and, and uh, palaces, etc. Hopefully we'll take you out to see the site itself on the top of a sheared off mountain. It's very extensive and really magnificent. These are examples of rather late in Monte Alban. They're after the common era. They're 200 to 800 in this period means they're a little over a thousand years old. But look at the detail and look at the, the magnificent detail uh, of the faces. And of course the dog is a, a guide to uh, the netherworld. And these are the treasures from Tomb 7, discovered in about 1933. These are turtles made of gold, a pure gold. And that was a uh, depiction of their beautiful work in those days, long time ago. This is very simple gold work, just beaten out of pure gold. Here is some very sophisticated gold work. Uh, I'm sure they have reproductions in the, uh, in the local uh, souvenir shops, but in the interim, my word, I wouldn't mind taking these home. I better not even say that out loud. They're liable to stop me at the door. And here is some, a necklace and a box that is as contemporary as today. And uh, when, I was, when I was lusting after the other pieces, it ain't nothing till you see this. And this is the Gela Getza. You're going to see some wonderful dancing and meet some of the people who are here at this. Gela Getza is a festival special to Oaxaca, which is where we are now. And we're in the ex convento, meaning this was a convent of Santa Catalina. It's 16th century and it will be a festival. We're in the Camino Real, which is a hotel, a gorgeous hotel, that has been built inside the walls of the ex-convento Santa Catalina. And here are some people kind of enjoying themselves, I think, just before the dancing begins. If you look at the amount of tequila and stuff that's been put away at this table, I think you'll find that they are enjoying themselves. We have some people here from Boston, Boston, Massachusetts. Yes, I parked my car in the garage. Good. Eh, mucho gusto. Somos mexicanos. Nos da. Estamos encantados de la compañía de estas personas que son de Estados Unidos. Mucho gusto. Carol and Mike Marriott from Burley, Washington. And I'm delighted, delighted to see you all here. We're all going to have a good time when the dancing starts, I'm sure. This gentleman is serving what's called cafe de olla, or coffee in a pot, Mexican-style coffee with a little cinnamon and a lot of sugar.
As you know, I'm just wild about Oaxaca. You've been listening to it on this program. And now I want you to see one of our favorite places in Oaxaca. This is the Hotel Hacienda La Noria. And as you know, a hacienda is kind of like a ranch. And here are some of the ra Here's a ranch hand. Happens he's the manager. Gerente, they call it here in Mexico. And his name is, you say it, please. Mephi Roset. But my nickname is Mephi. Mephi, so yes. Mephi's okay. Mephi's okay. Mephi is okay. He's going to show us around a little bit. So what do you say we take a look at some of the ranch equipment here and the swimming pool and some of the nice things about this hotel? This is the main part of that hotel. The pool in the background and there's a, a, a dining room and everything. You can come here and be very comfortable for a long time. We've come for a month at a time. This time I'm here for two weeks. Mephi's probably good and sick of me. I ask, keep asking no. him for no. no. Okay. I would like to have plants like you. <laughs> That's great. Okay, we'll see you. Maybe we'll take a look at the other hotel too. I don't know if we'll get around to it, but we sure will try. Sure. Uh, here you are just with another view of the hotel grounds. Very comfortable, very pleasant, big wisteria and, you know, lovely plantings. North. This is Oaxaca in February, a garden, an interior garden of a lovely home across the street from the hotel. It's not exactly the way everybody lives in Oaxaca, but the people who have great taste and great style. And just so you can see what it looks like when we're up to our hips in snow in Philadelphia. No beaches just lovely flowers and a spring-like uh, temperature. The people who live in this house enjoy the Mexican handcrafts, along with some European things as well, of course, but all the detail on this fireplace is Mexican tinware and absolutely beautiful. We'll go take a look now at some of the uh, Santos in another room. More crafts typical of Mexico. Not the kind you buy in every market, you understand. These are hand crafts that are probably antiques, but every bit glorious work. This angel is very typical of Oaxaca work. There's a town where they make them in black and in this uh, red clay. And they're just, every thing they do here is with an eye of beauty. And here is clay work from another community called Atzompa. And they do this raw clay. They make wonderful, uh, the Virgin of Soledad is very usual. And then this is a most unusual big pot. We're going to start our visit inside the market with a stop at a juice bar where you see they make juice out of fresh pineapple, oranges, carrots, even cactus. And of course, everything, as in Mexico, everywhere there are flowers decorating every place they possibly can have it. So let's go have some, I'm going to have my juice right now. Now you can see she's squeezing oranges and using a juice machine. Many places still do it by hand, you know, the press method. But this is very up to date here in Oaxaca. And 
the orange juice is really the favorite, but they wash the oranges first, and everything, as you can see, is immaculately clean. And this little tiny glass of orange juice is what I'm having, and it costs about 60 cents, freshly squeezed, and absolutely delicious. Now we're getting into the heart of the market, and here is a woman who sells tamales. Su nombre, señor? Angelica. Angelita? Uh -huh. See, si, a beautiful name that means little angel. And she makes tamales of mole, coloraditos, or amarillo, meaning yellow ones. Yes. Delicioso, precioso. Yes. <laughs> okay. Rico. Muy, muy rico. Thank you. They, that means very rich, very delicious. And now we're at the part of the heart of the part of the market where they sell fruits and vegetables. Very fresh, lots of bananas as you can see, oranges, strawberries, tomatoes, anything you can think of that <coughs> is in season because you understand they don't get their stuff from California and Florida. This is all local produce. And this is really what I'm here at the market for. These are zucchini flowers. Flores de calabacita, doesn't it sound a lot more romantic in Spanish? And I take them home and I'm gonna dip them in flour and egg and make fritters out of them and they're absolutely heavenly. I wait till I come to Oaxaca to get them as often as I can. We're gonna start with a little breakfast here at a market stall that is just patronized by everyone. And it starts out by making the tortillas in a very rudimentary tortilla press. And then she's taking apart the cheese for the kind of, I'm not going to wait till I get home. I'm going to have some, uh, some zucchini flowers in my breakfast. I can't ever get too many of them. They're so good. Now, she's cooking the tortilla that she just made putting the cheese and zucchini flowers on it. Then I'm going to have it with a little bit of uh, avocado and a little bit of hot sauce. And now I'm being served. This is called cafe de olla. That means coffee made in a pot. And this is one cup of coffee. Okay, and now I'm having the trimmings, having a little guacamole in there. Salsa, por favor. Tomate, this one is not hot at all, not spicy at all. Just very simple tomato sauce. The other ones are, you can have uh, mushrooms and you can have green sauce and, and dried uh, pepper sauce and more picante. It's more, you know, spicy. It's, they're all delicious. Standing at the beginning of the archaeological site of Mitla, Mitla is uh, south of the city of Oaxaca, and it's on a plain surrounded by mountains and magnificent friezes, very sophisticated um, stonework. Most interesting of, for me, the most interesting of the archaeological sites. It's not too big, but it is very grand. And climbing up onto one of the platforms that is part of the archaeological site of Midla, you have an opportunity to observe this wonderful stonework, very sophisticated, very similar to Greek architecture, as a matter of fact. But they had no contact, so it really isn't one influencing the other. Very important also in the fact, again, that of the use of the scapulary framework, which is on the outside, a protection over the design, because it overlaps the design, and by overlapping it, it creates shades. This is the palace, the most important building in Mitla. This is where the reigning family lived, and uh, when the Spanish came, rather than killing them, they uh, put them in as part of their own uh, tax collectors, really. And in the background, other than the mountains, we have a wonderful little church 
that is made from the stones that have been harvested from Mitla. We're high in the hills overlooking the valley of Oaxaca on our way up to a dig called Cerro de Asompa. However, the road is, <clears throat> shall we say, a little bit primitive, and we're part way up with our taxi, and we decided to wait until it's a little more finished because our back teeth are jarred out of our heads. In the interim, though, in the interim, however, you can get a view of this valley from on high and an idea of what the surrounding mountains are like. It's very cool up here, bright and sunny, but the higher you get, the cooler it is. And here's a woman with her goats who lives up in these hills. She's totally and strictly in native dress. You can see it's not an easy existence here. But, oh my, is it beautiful. That nice woman, the goat herd, told us it was about another two kilometers, more than a mile, up, over the top of that hill, out of sight here. But we're giving up. It's just too tough to walk over it unless you're a goat. They were hairless. See, they're very strange. They move a little bit. Let me show you another one. This is called row, snub nose, and thick lips. Well, the one which is by the doorway, have a look at his camber, like mouth is half open, uh, close eye. He has a forehead, a ponytail, big earring, but in her stomach, in advance, you have seen the baby. But it's always a bridge. And he's carrying a small sombrero, you know, hat. What is the of the stone, you see? Okay. Have a look at this one. Come a little bit, it's very interesting. As I said, Oaxaca's wonderful, Mexico City is charming, and we hope you've had a good time. I know I do every time I go. Come along, we'll go other wonderful places in the future. Barbara Ann Rosenberg, your roving reporter.